night as we was headed home um, from the bakers, we had they had our birthday dinner, and uh, we had went to the singing with Jenny and Kenny and some of the others that showed up, and um, he had this this song came on Yahweh, and I tell you, it hit me so hard, Yahweh, and and the man that that was uh, there was a man that was singing. And he, he reminded me, I've heard it before, but he said, and you might have to help me, Kenny, or Joey. Um, he said that when a baby, when a baby first, first is born, that's what they're hollering, Yahweh. <laughs> they're calling Yahweh. Breath in, and breath, out. breath in and breath out. That's what it was. Breath in and breath out, it's Yahweh. And, and when, when we got in the car, and headed home, and Joey put that song on. It was all I could do to sit in the car, Brenda. It was all I could do. And I was like, I was like keeping myself calm because we were driving down the road and there wasn't anywhere for me to go, you know. <laughs> but God is good, and He is Yahweh. He is the Lord of all. He is. And, uh, and Brenda pointed out something to me when I was talking about the every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that he's, he's Christ. He's the son of the living God. Everybody's going to confess that, people. How did you put it, Brenda? But, but, there, but there will be a separation. There will be. There will be those on the left and those on the right. And the ones with the Lord, the ones on the right are the ones that's going to go to heaven and the ones that are on the left are not. There's a separation, and we've got to make sure that we, we are ready, that, we're the, that we are, are praying, that we are serving God. You know, people, people will say, sometimes that they've, they've said to me, I'm just not willing to do this, this, and this for the Lord. I said, well, if you'll, if you'll get on your face before God, if, you will, if you'll pray and you'll tell the Lord, Lord, I don't think I can do this. You know, there's a lot of preachers that have said that. I've said it. God, I don't think I can do this. There's no way. You know I can't talk in front of people. I said all of those things. But see, he knew what he had planned for me. And he knew that as soon as I got past what the enemy was telling me in my mind, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't talk, you can't stand in front of people, you can't, you, you can't say anything, you can't remember anything. But see, every time, like, like when Colin got up here, and, and, and when I get up here, and when any of you get up here, that is, that is uh, uh, pushing the devil back. That is saying, get thee behind me, Satan. I'm going to do what the Lord wants me to. And then he's going to bless you. He will do that for you. He will bless you. He will bring blessings into your life. But make sure, make sure that, that, that when, you, when you pray, that, that you, know, you know that you're ready. You know that you know that you know. Just make sure that you're ready to go. Because there is a reckoning day. The Bible says there is a reckoning day. And that one day, regardless, when it's our time, it's our time. And you know, I was watching a movie the other day and, and the, the lady said, I don't know when my time is. Because the little kid was saying, Grandma, tell me, tell me. When are you, are, are you dying? Are you leaving me? Tell me, tell me. And she says, I can't tell you that. Only God knows. And He does. Only God knows. But make sure that we're ready. That's the, that's the main thing. We're going to talk about persistence, but humbled today. Persistent, but humbled today. Persistent means continuous or nonstop, unending, anything like that. Humble is, we know, is meek, respectful. It's, it's submissive. Um, and it, it, it took me a little while. I couldn't, I really couldn't decide on, on the appropriate title. And that's why I ended up finally coming up with the persistent but humbled. And you'll see why when we get into the scriptures today. But I'm going to read from Luke 18 and I'm going to read 1 through 14. Because there's two different things in here that I want us to go through. A persistent woman and then an humbled man. It says, He spake a parable unto them to this end 
that man ought always to pray and not faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. He didn't care. He could care less about people. He just cared about himself more or less. And there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. He just said, now nah, go on, get out of here. I ain't listening to you. But afterwards, afterwards, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man. He said, yet because this widow troubles me, troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest her continually coming wearies me. If she keeps on and keeps on and keeps on, it's going to weary this, this judge. And he says, I'm just going to give her what she asked for. And then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Oh, yes, he will. He listens to every cry, every, he sees every tear, he bottles them up. He knows everything that we're going through. He says, uh, I will tell you, in verse 8, it says, I will tell you that he will avenge them speedily. He will do it quick. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? When the Son of Man comes, is he going to find faith in you? Is he going to find where you have been trusting him and, and the, the prayer has not been answered yet, but you're still trusting him? You're still waiting on him? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, I want to do it again. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Verse 9 says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. And two men went up into the, the temple to pray, the one Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Listen to this. God, I thank thee that I am not like other men, like, uh, that I'm not as other men are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or any other thing that you might think of. Or even as this publican, he was pointing his finger, even as this publican, and he starts telling what all he's done. I fast twice in, the week, twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, he's standing afar off. Standing afar off. He wouldn't even lift up his eyes unto heaven. But he smote upon his breast saying, God, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Help me, oh God, to bring it out the way that you want it today, Lord. Hide me behind the cross that, I might, that they might not see me, Lord, but that they will see you, you today, Lord. That you'll give them this word, Lord. That you'll speak to hearts today, God. And we give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Now to set up this text, I'm, uh, we're looking at two parables here, and, and I couldn't do one without the other. I just I kept going back, kept going back, kept thinking, and I just couldn't do one without the other. Jesus illustrates these, these uh, both of them together, and they're, being, they're about being persistent in prayer. Lena come up to me a while ago and she said, "Are you preaching on prayer this morning?" I said, "Well, in a roundabout way, maybe." She says, that's what God gave me for the, the youth today or the juniors today. She was very excited about that. But that's the way God will do sometimes. He'll, he'll give people um, uh, confirmation. Sometimes we just have to have confirmation. And he, he gave her confirmation this morning that she was doing the right lesson. It says, so we're, it's about having an humble spirit uh, as you pray and as you serve God. Um, 
<clears throat> the first thing, the first parable is the widow and the unjust judge. I don't know about y'all, but I like reading these, that the parables that Jesus gives sometimes, you know, sometimes you can't, you can't really, don't know how to, how to pull out a sermon completely out of them, and you have to put two or three or four together, but they're so good, and they got so much meaning to them. But this judge, he was mean. You think about it. You, I'm sure that you have either on TV, maybe you've even in person been in front of a judge and, and, and they wouldn't very nice. They wouldn't nice at all. I've, I've been around some when I, when I uh, got or hit somebody on the bus, you know, and they sent me to court, Gwinnett County, sent me to court, you know, and I had to pay my fine and everything. But that judge was not happy. He was not happy. He was not nice. He was not nice, and I, and I think back when I was thinking about uh, the scriptures uh, this week, I was thinking, man, that judge, he was like this one. He was mean. He was not nice at all. You know, so you got these kind of experiences in your life, I'm sure, every one of us. He was, he was out for himself. He wasn't out for anybody else. He was out for himself. He was a very selfish judge. He wanted things for himself, and he didn't fear God. He had no fear of God whatsoever. That scares me. To know that somebody, ha that so that somebody walks around on this earth and does not fear God, it makes my knees tremble because I know what God can do. I know how God can take care of me. I know what He can do for them if they'll just give Him a chance, give Him a, a, a time, and He will take care of things for them and He'll show them. He'll open up their eyes and let them see. This man was godless, in other words. He was, he was sinful, he was unfair, and he was prejudiced. He was prejudiced. He was totally an unjust judge. He was giving unjust judgments. Now you can watch some of the, the court cases, and I'm sure some of you may do it. I like the court cases. I would have been in forensics myself if God hadn't called me to, to uh, uh, work for Him. I think that's where I would have went because that's what I've always been interested in. I always wanted to get into those, and, and I watch the court cases, and I watch things that's, that's going on, and, and I think to myself, that one was not judged right. That one was not judged right. I've, I've sit there at home and said it. You've done wrong. That's not what you're supposed to do, judge. You know, those kind of things. So that's what this judge was. He was unjust. We have to pray. You ever find yourself in jail, uh, not in jail, but you ever find yourself having to go to court or something? Pray. Pray because God can turn those judges' uh, minds around. He can turn those attorneys' minds around and, 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 and give you favor. I pray for favor everywhere I go, Kenny. I have to have favor. I have to have favor. Because if you think about it, this world's getting worse. It's waxing worse and worse, the Bible says. So, on the other hand, a good judge, we know, he rules or she rules in the fear of God. They have the fear of God on them, and they care about people. They care about the justice. They care about the fairness in the judgments that, that they give. They care about that. And, and I do believe that we have judges out there that pray. That pray before they make decisions. I really believe it, because I've seen some of them on TV, and it's just like, that's, that's a kindred spirit, Lord. And they don't say all that much, but you can just, you can just, you pull it out when you're watching it. I, I'm, I, that's just the way I am, y'all. Maybe y'all are different. But there was this widow. And uh, the adversaries, her, her enemy, was giving her trouble. Trying to take her belongings. Trying to take her belongings, including her land. Everything that she had. But, and she wanted justice. She needed justice. She wanted what was rightly, what rightly belonged to her. We all want that, what, is right, what rightly belongs to us. Um, and this widow realized that she had to become persistent. She had to keep going and keep going and keep going back before this unjust judge till finally this unjust judge says, her continual begging is getting the best of me. Getting the best of me. Now that's not what God says. He sees 
that we continuously come back, we're persistent, and we come back, and we come back with our, our prayers, and, and we're asking Him for things. But He's also looking as the time, in the time that we are persistent in our prayers, He is also looking for us to, to praise Him, to say, Lord, in advance... In advance, Jenny, I, 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 I praise you, Lord. I thank you for the answer because I know that you're given the answer at the right time. That is the main thing with me, and y'all may hear it out of me continuously. I may, you may, uh, I may be persistent in telling you that, but I want my prayers answered at the right time, at God's time. I don't want them answered in my time because most of the time, my time's not good. Most of the time, it wouldn't be right, but I want them answered in the time that God wants them answered and when in His time because, see, he knows everything. He knows that that if if I need if I need something, let's say, what do I need done at the church? Tell me somebody, what do I need done here? Uh, I need something. I need I need what? The roof. Oh, the roof. I need the roof done. I need the roof done. If I'm sorry, I'm moving. Um, so I can be I can be real persistent in it. I can keep on and keep on and keep on. But at the right time, if I wait till the right time, then God's going to line everything up. Because see, somebody, some, somebody might, not, might not be ready. If, if it comes to salvation, somebody might not be ready. They might have to go through one more thing, just one more thing before they'll give in and say, Lord, I'm done. I come to you. I lay it all down before you. It's all yours. It's all yours, Lord. See, that's what I'm talking about, the right time. Pray when you pray. Thank God for the right time that the prayer's answered. If you don't see the prayer answered right off the bat, it's not time. It is not time. Just trust God in it. Because see, we learn things. And, and I told somebody just the other day because they asked me about it. I said, uh, I said in your trials, in your, in your tribulations, in, in whatever you're going through, whatever's happening in your life, just thank God. And then say, Lord, help me to learn what I need to learn. Out of this trouble, out of this trial, out of this situation, whatever's going on, please just help me learn what I need to learn. Because everything that we go through is a learning process. And it's for, for our good and for God's glory. Amen? Amen. So he granted her petition for justice. Even though the, the only reason we know that he granted it was to get rid of her. That's not God's way. He don't want to get rid of you. But the unjust judge did. The flesh man did. But the spirit man don't. Now, how can being persistent to a sovereign God reward us? How, how, can, how can us going back and forth and constantly praying and praying and praying and begging and begging? You know, Nancy, Nancy, uh, 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 Curran, Nancy Curran, she said she'd always say she was a beggar. Said she was, she was supposed to beg God. That's what she done. She begged God. She pleaded for everybody. You know, in here, her prayers went out. She said she would pray and she'd pray for every person. She said, sometimes I might not remember who sit on what pew, but she said, I'd go through each pew and I'd say, I'd say, Lord, you know what they need. Lord bless them. You know, those kind of things. And, and if you were specifically telling her something, she would call it out. How's the Lord going to reward a sovereign God? How can He reward us? God the Father, I'm going to submit to you right here. It's not that we weary Him, because we don't. We can ask a million and one plus forever, and it won't weary Him. We can't wear Him out by asking Him. We can't. But it's because of His faithfulness to His children. That's the answer. He gives us because His faithfulness to us. He answers our prayer at the right time. It's not because of us. And we ain't going to weary Him out. 
We're not going to wear him out by asking over and over. You know, I have said it, and I know that some of you have told me, I, can't, I just can't ask God anymore. I just can't ask God for this situation anymore. But we can't wear him out. I'm telling somebody today. I'm telling you because I feel it deep. We can't wear him out. He is faithful. He is the faithful God. Are you faithful to Him? Let me just ask you that question. You think over, let, let's just stop right here, right where we are. Just stop and think, am I faithful to God? Am I doing what the Lord has asked me to do? You know, there's a lot of things that uh, we don't want to do. There's a lot of things I don't want to do. But I know that I must because it's what God wants we got to push self out of the way. Got to get self out of the way. God don't like self, selfish. He don't like selfish. He likes for us to be giving. He likes for us to be loving. He likes for us to, 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 to call in everybody, to, to talk to everybody and tell them about Him. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 tells us, Faithful is He that calleth you, who also will do it. Faithful is He that calls you. What has He called you to do? What is He calling you to do? What is He, what is he speaking to you in the midnight hours? You know, I ask the Lord a lot of times, for all of you, myself included, I ask for the Lord. I said, Lord, speak to them in the midnight hours. Because see, that's when, that's when I, I'm not talking about midnight. I'm talking about the midnight, it could be midnight, but I'm talking about the midnight hours of your life. Those times where you just, you just don't know what to do. Lord, give them a word. Lord, wake them up. Lord, Lord uh, knock on their door. Who's there? Oh, it's you, Lord. Get up. Get up. Come with me. Unless the Lord speaks to you like, like that. I don't even know what to say. There's nothing like it. But He will wake you up. If you desire, Brenda, I'm sure, I'm sure He's woke us all up at one time or another. If you desire such, He will wake you up. And for those words to come and say, come on, come on, i got to talk to you. There's nothing like it. He's faithful. He is faithful. Very faithful. I remember, and I don't mean to bring up anything, Michael, but I remember sitting on my couch and talking. Michael's mom, he, she used to come over a couple of times and she'd cook. What was that stuff they cook? She cooked. Gumbo. She used to cook gumbo and she'd bring it to Colin and Michael's and so she'd bring it to the house sometime and, and would sit and we would talk. We talked about the faithfulness of God. I was thinking about this the other day. How God said that He was He's so faithful that we can give we can give our everything no matter what she was going through, no matter what I was going through at the time. We give everything in our lives. We'd hold nothing back. She said, she said, I don't hold nothing back, Martha. I said, I don't either. I don't either, Libby. I can't. I can't afford to. And, and I was thinking about the faithfulness of that woman this week. And I was thinking, God, she was faithful. And I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you so that you'll know. That woman's prayers is still going on today. She still, God still hears those prayers. They're still going in the heavenlies. And I can tell you that regardless of whether she knew that my child was going through cancer or would be going through cancer, she still prayed for my child. She still prayed for her. She prayed for the grandchildren. We both prayed together. We prayed because we knew that we had grandchildren coming up. We knew that we had family coming up. She had family. I had family. I'm telling you, prayer, persistent. And that woman was persistent in prayer. She was very persistent in prayer because we talked about it. So I didn't... I, 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 
you know, sometimes, sometimes when, 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 you're, when you're studying something, the Lord will just bring back a remembrance to you. And it's like, wow, Lord, I forgot about that. But I sit there this week and I was just, you're right. You're right, Lord. You're right. You're right. Persistent, but humbled. That woman, she, was, she had a way about her. No, didn't she, Michael? Tell me. She had a way about her. But I'm telling you, she was humbled. She was a humble person. Humbled before God. And that was her way. She loved God with all her heart, with all her might, with all her soul. And she was a praying woman. But God was faithful. And He's faithful. He will be faithful to complete her prayers and have them completely answered. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. That's the way I look at it. Just the same way as my mother's. I believe. And, and some of the people that have... Johnny, Johnny Church, he, he pa- prayed for this church. He prayed diligently for this church. And he would come in every once in a while on Sunday morning. He'd come in and say, The Lord woke me up, Martha. The Lord woke me up at 4 o'clock. We're going to have a service. And did we have a service, Brenda? Yes, we did. Every time we would have a service. We've got many, many that pray. Many that that stay on their face before God. I know this woman does, and I know many of you do. You stay on this on your on your knees before God for this church and for this family, for these people. And see, that's what it's about. Persistent, but humbled. Humbled. We're going to talk about the humble in a minute. God is sovereign. He's a sovereign judge. And He'll... He'll never, he'll, he'll never be an unjust judge. You will stand before Him. If, you, if, if, if somebody chooses to not serve Him and, and go to hell, you will stand before Him and still call Him a just judge for sending you to hell. Because that's what He is. He's a just judge. And yeah, I just walked out on the water right then. I sure did. I felt myself go out. But I'm telling you, it's the truth. You'll stand before Him. You'll kneel before Him. You'll bow before Him. And you'll look up and you'll say, you are a just judge. You are. Let it be good. Let it be good. Never give up. Never give in. Don't lose heart. Keep praying. Keep praying. Thy will be done. That's one of the main things I want you to remember. If you don't get anything else out of this today, I want you to remember, please pray, your will be done, God. Your will be done. Because we don't want our will. We want God's will. I tell you that God says He will avenge them. He'll avenge His children speedily. Nevertheless, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, will He find faith on the earth. When the time comes, it's God's going to bring His justice for His children. He's going to bring it quick. When, when, when Jesus comes back, there's going to be judgment. And He's going to, uh, to, to, to avenge His children. Quick. It'll be a quick work. No one's going to know how it happened, but they're going to know that it happened. Every one of us will know that it happened. <clears throat> Jesus asked, when God does execute judgment, when Jesus comes back, will He find faith? Will He find faith? Will He find persistence in prayer? Will He find you being persistent? Will He find you being persistent? Will He find you being humbled? Will He? Will He find us? Colossians 4 and 2 says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. We've got to continue. We've got to keep going. No matter whether the answer comes today, tomorrow, or whenever it might come, we've got to continue in prayer. Now the second parable is the Pharisee and the tax collector. The Pharisee and the tax collector, or publican, whichever one you want to call it, they both entered the temple. And they entered to pray. That's what they done. They went to the temple to pray back then. But as the Pharisee began his prayer, you know immediately, you hear it. When you start reading it, you see self-centeredness. You see it's all about me, 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 me. He's... He's got to be the center of attention. He hear, you hear arrogance. You hear confidence in, in his own self-righteousness. 
Uh, you see him looking down on everybody else around him, calling out their sins in front of people, calling them out right there in the sanctuary. God, I don't, I'm glad I'm not an extortioner. I'm glad, Lord, that, that I'm not like the publican. I'm glad that, that I'm not an adulterer. I'm glad, Lord, I'm glad. You know, just saying it all out in front of everybody. Because he wanted everybody to see him. He wanted everybody to know. Here stood this law-abiding, religious, disciplined, respectful, or respected, upstanding man praying these things. Now see, they, they thought this was, this was something, you know, he was, he was good. But that's not what God was looking for. That's not what God's looking for today. He's looking for an humble heart. An humbled heart. The Pharisee was uh, more or less giving himself accolades, I guess you could say. But don't let our prayers, don't let your prayers be about that. Don't let your prayers be about me, 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 boasting about me, me, me. I know we talk about things from the pulpit. We talk about things when we give devotions, but that's, that's different. We're not, we're not trying to lift ourselves up. We're trying to give God glory. That's what we want to do. That is our, our main thing. Everything that comes from this pulpit gives God glory. Amen. 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 Ephesians 2.10 says, We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk with them. But over in the, in the far corner now is the publican. In the shadows, he's way off. He's, he, he don't even, he don't even want to come, come close. He's ashamed. He's standing there, the Bible says, and he's beating his breast. He's beating, beating himself because he's so ashamed before God. That he couldn't even he couldn't even look up to heaven. You know, that's pretty that's pretty bad when when you when you're constantly looking down and you you can't look up to God to pray. When when you get in those places, when you and, and I'm sure that we all do at one time or another, we just say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's what we got to do in those times. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. This tax collector, he was he was just ashamed of himself. It actually reminds me of the account as, as I was reading in uh, Luke 5 where it, with Jesus and Simon. Jesus had gotten into Simon's boat, you know, one day and he was preaching to the crowd and uh, uh, they were on the shore. And Simon and the others, they were in the boat. They were tired. They'd been out fishing all night. They hadn't, uh, they hadn't caught anything. You know the story. And then uh, Jesus told them, said, cast your net on the right side. On the right side, on the right side, the side of Jesus, not on the enemy's side, but on the right side, the side where Jesus is. And, and we know the story. The, Simon finally gave in. He didn't want to in the beginning. He was tired. He was worn out. He wanted to go home because he had troubles, because he needed money. And the only way he was going to make money and pay his taxes was to, to have fish, and he didn't have any fish. And so uh, Simon finally gave in. He cast, his, he cast his net on the right side like, he, like Jesus asked him to. And he got a large catch. Remember the catch? He got a large catch. We had it in our Christmas play, wasn't it? Was it Christmas? It was one of them. Easter. Easter. Well, um, one, whichever one it was. It was Easter. It was. But he got a large catch. And uh, when Simon, Simon saw that, when that happened, Simon just, I, I can just see him just, just falling down at Jesus' feet. And he said this in, his, in the Scriptures. He said, Lord, go away from me. I'm a sinful man. Simon felt that sinfulness. He felt the dirtiness, the unpureness with Jesus when, when the Lord had done something for him. He didn't deserve it, but the Lord was going to use him and he knew it. And the Lord told him, said, look up, look up. Lift up your head, Simon. 
You know, don't put your head down anymore. Lift up your head, Simon. Because today, I'm going to teach you how to fish for men. You don't have to fish for fish. I'm going to teach you how to fish for men. I'm going to teach you if we allow Jesus. See, Simon had to be willing. He had to give in and say, okay, Lord, I'm yours. You know, I'll do whatever you want. And he gave in. And when he did, then the Lord blessed and showed him how. Showed him what he wanted him to do. And you know, you know the story. He became Peter. On this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against him, or against us. Um, he had his name changed because he was a rock. He was a rock for the, uh, uh, for the people. He was, he was the one that, that maybe they all came to to get the word of God, to get, get uh, instructions from, from the Lord. When we get on the right side, the Jesus side, He'll give you hope, just like He did the tax collector. Because He said, as He looked at all the people around Him, everything that was going on, He says, I tell you, I tell you now, Bear County Talk, I tell you right now, that this tax collector, he went home justified before God. He went home justified before God, unlike the selfish Pharisee. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled. God help us. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. James 4 and 10 tells us this. He says, humble yourself in the sight of God and He will lift you up. Humble yourself before God. There's a lot of times that, that I, hear, I hear people when they're praying. I hear it on the TV even. Some preachers, they'll say, we come humbly before you, O oh God. And that's the way we need to go before God is to go humbly before Him and seek His face. Amen. God is our promotion manager. He promotes us in due season. Whatever your season you're in, you're due for a due season. Amen. 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 We have winter, spring, summer, and fall. Well, we've got number five, due season. Somebody's going to be in due season really soon. I felt that. That's, ac that's according to God's plan and His purpose. Due season comes to us. It comes to us. And I pray that you're in the right place to receive it at the right time. Because He works it all out. We, we must remember, this is what the Lord gave me years ago. We must remember who's large and in charge. Jesus! He's large and in charge. He can, he, he's so large, He's got the whole world in His hand. Whole world. Y'all think about that. Y'all think about it. Do you see yourself? You're a speck, but He sees every detail about you. Everything about you. Even though to us it would be, we couldn't even see. But He does. He does. A persistent prayer and an humbled prayer is a God-centered prayer. Prayer. Lord said that this week. He said, he said it's, it's got to be God-centered. Pray my will. Thy will be done, Lord. Thy will be done, Lord God. Thy will be done, Father. That's exactly what Jesus prayed on the cross. Was, Thy will be done. And that's what we should pray. Let's stand. That persistent prayer and humbled prayer God-centered prayer is the kind of prayer in God's timing that things will that it will render results we will see results we will see things we've seen prayers answered so many prayers answered here we've seen I've, I've, I've had people to text me and say pray and, and, and just a little while later text me back and say the Lord answered Lord answered. Sometimes it is quick, and especially when we really need it, when we're sick or something like that. 
But there's some times that he's setting up. And, I, and, and, and it's like I see this in my spirit. He's setting up like one step right after the other. And we're, we're right back here. But he's setting these steps up. And I can see people in, in these steps standing there. He's got to get those people ready for something. Sometimes we don't, we don't understand and we don't know why he waits. But if you trust him, if you wait on him, if you wait on him, don't quit. Don't throw in the towel, people. They had a song yesterday that was talking about throwing in the towel. Don't throw in the towel. Just trust God. Let's pray. Fathers, we come before you today, Lord. We do come humbled before you, Lord. We, we come persistent. We come persistent, Lord, asking you, Lord Jesus, to touch and to, to move and to bless, to bring about things, Lord, bring about prayers answered, Father God. Today, Lord, you know and you understand every person that's here, every person. And just like Colleen said, Lord, we, we're all different we all live different lives, God. We all have different ways, Lord. There's not one of us, Lord, that are, that are the very same, the exact very same, not even identical twins, Lord. You know the difference in them even. Father, you know every difference about us, every difference about us. And God, we trust you, Lord, today. And we're asking you, Father God, we're asking you, Lord, to move each and in, in each and every person's life, Lord, whatever their need might be today, God, however it needs to be answered, Lord, I pray, God, that you would work it out because you are the great God. You are omnipotent, omnipresent. You're omniscient, Lord. You're, you're all-knowing, you're all-seeing, and you're everywhere at all times. You're with us, Lord, in this place today. And you're across the world in another church with people, Lord. Maybe, in a, maybe hidden in a basement or, or, or hidden in a cave somewhere, Lord. But they're praising you. Maybe they're only able, God, to, to, just, to just speak to you in their minds, God, because they're not allowed to speak like we are, Lord, openly before you. Oh, God, we pray, Lord, for this country. We pray, Lord, for this world. We pray, God, for everything that's going on, Lord. We ask you today, God, to make a way, Lord, where there seems to be no way. Lord, you're working it out and we trust you. We believe you, Lord. Oh, God we ask Lord today Father God that you would have your will and your way Lord not my will Lord not this people's will Lord not this church or, or, or this state Lord nobody's will but yours and yours alone Lord that's what we want oh God have your way have your way in our lives Lord we give it to you Lord everything God we don't hide anything from you Lord we, we can't because you're all knowing, all seeing. You see it all, Lord. You know it all. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. Today, if you have a need and you want to be prayed for or you want to come to the altar this, this morning, this altar's open. We can pray with you, pray for you. Because that's what it's all about, is lifting up. Being persistent in our prayers. Being persistent but humbled. But being humbled in our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.